God is a triune God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So also man, man is a spirit, he has a soul, he dwells in the body. The soul is made up of the mind, the emotions, and the will. But the mind is the aspect that we use to reason. God speaking in Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18, he declares, it says, come, let us reason together. God expects you to reason with him. That means your mind has the capacity that God has. You cannot ask your dog to reason with you. You can only ask someone to reason with you who reasons at the same level. For God to call you to say reason with me means there's something in you that you don't even know about. He said, if you can reason with him, you shall eat the good of the land. So there's good in the land. Now, God is a thinking God. He said, come, let us reason. He didn't say, come, let us pray. When it came to prayer, you, don't re you pray, he answers. But reason, he said, come, let us reason. God does not pray with you. You pray, he answers your prayers. But when it came to your mind, he said, come, let us sharpen it. And thinking is one of the activities of the mind. The moment a man's mind is upgraded, his life will also be upgraded. You are where you are now based on what your mind, the capacity of your mind. If you increase the capacity of your mind, your life will go forward. Is somebody can to say it. How, you know how powerful the mind is. Listen carefully. When it comes to your mind, God said in Genesis chapter 11 verse 6, He said, that which they have imagined to do, that's from their mind. Imagination comes from where? The mind. Imagination is simply image formation. Image what? That's imagination. He said, and the Lord said, behold, the people is one. And they have all one love. And this they begin to do. And nothing will be strained from them which they have imagined. You can imagine God saying that anything your mind can grasp, he cannot stop it. So if God cannot stop it, then the devil is too small to stop it. I mean, that's what God saying here. You know, we have heard so much spiritual warfare. I think it's time the church begin to know that there's another thing called mental warfare. And the mental warfare is superior to spiritual warfare because if you fail in the mental warfare, you fail in spiritual warfare. Because Satan has no problem attacking you in the spirit. He attacks your mind first. His main target is your mind. He attacked Adam from where? The mind. He attacked Jesus from where? So Satan, first and foremost, attacks you from the mind before he gets you. So if you fail from your mind, you fail in life. Am I talking? And the mind is never talked about. And for instance, the woman with the issue of blood, she said in her heart, if I may touch by the M of his garment. She was saying that from where? The mind. She first of all programmed her deliverance from her mind. She said, if I know this man, he's a messiah who heals. If I can just have the access to touch. She said that first from the mind before her faith worked. I mean, understand the process. Glory to God. So your miracle follows the direction of your thought. Every outstanding miracle is a product of word-based thinking process. That's why Satan targets your mind. What does it target? Your mind. Now, it's a mind blinder in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 4, the Bible says, 2 Corinthians 4, 4, it says, In whom the God of this world had what? Blinded the minds of them which believe not. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. So the major thing Satan wants to do in your life is to blind your mind from seeing the truth. So here. When he came to Jesus, he said, are you the son of God? If you are the son of God, then turn this bread, so to bread. He was playing with his what? I mean, 
Jesus is the son. So he doesn't need to doubt. But he was telling him, has it not come to you before? If truly all these testimonies they are sharing is true, why is your own walking like that? Are, are you sure if it's well, like true? Why are you suffering? Who is talking to you? From where? Your mind. The moment you accept it, you have failed. Okay, if, if truly people get money, then why are you so poor after five years of being born again? And then you sit down. They say it's true. <laughs> if truly God heals, why did that woman who is serving God die? Why did she die with all her service? They see they are talking, it's not true. They say it's true. She even served God more than me. How come she died? Me. Mm. No, he said, true. No point going to church. Whether you go to church or not, the same thing. I said, it's true. He said, I've got it this one cheap. Say, so you can't get me. Amen. Say it one more time. Amen. Now, hear this. That's in Matthew chapter 4, where Jesus was tempted, verse 3. Now, in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3, 2 Corinthians 11, 3, just look at the mind and your future. Now, listen. He said, but I fear, least by any means, as the serpent began Eve through his what? Subtility, so your minds should not be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. He said, I don't want Satan to corrupt your mind, because the Bible is so simple that he will tell you this is simple to believe. But as simple as the word of God, it is what will guarantee your future. I'm going to ask what God say here. Glory to God. The devil corrupts and abuses the minds of people against the truth. Against what? We say we have not received the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a what? Sound mind. May that sound mind in you begin to walk from today. In the name of Jesus Christ. That is 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. And it says, you and I have the mind of Christ. 1 Corinthians 2 16. Now, if we have the mind of Christ, <laughs> and all things were made by him. Without him, there was nothing made that was made. So if you created all things with that mind and you have that same mind, then your life should not be where it is now. So every outstanding result in life is traceable to your level of reasoning. No matter where you are now, if you can reason more, your life will improve. The prodigal son did not fast. The prodigal son did not pray, but he reasoned his way out. We fast and pray, but we don't reason towards our future. Am I talking to someone here? Glory to God, but you will get to the next phase of your life. <laughs> when you are prayed with the mind of Christ, the world have no choice but to mind you. Now hear this, and hear me well. The Bible declared in 1 Corinthians 1, 24, it said, Christ is the power. It said, but unto them which are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. Is that true, sir? So, every child of God has two things. Power and what? Wisdom. You know, the seat of wisdom is the mind. Hope you know that. Because you can't have wisdom without your mind. When you say somebody is wise, simply say it's a man who has sense in a common language. Is that true, sir? Now, if Christ is the power of God, we all go for power. An average Christian all over the world goes for what? He fasts, casts out demons, no problem. But power is 50%. Wisdom is 50%. How many people utilize their mind? So if you are standing all on 50% all your life, you can imagine. And I doubt if anybody has 50 over 50. Am I talking? The other 50, nobody goes for it. People don't go for it. So you see men casting out demons, driving all the witches, but nothing to show. They beat their wives after casting demons. Because his mind is not used. Am I talking? He prays all the prayers, yet he's begging from a sinner to eat. Say, it can't be so anymore. Say, like a child of God. Now, at New 
new birth, when you gave your life to Jesus, your mind was upgraded. It was what? There was a mind transplant which you have to use to benefit in life. Am I talking? Because he said we have. He didn't say we will have. So when a man is born again, he has the mind of Christ. And Jesus speaking here, what he said, he said, I and my father are one. In John 10, 30. And if the father and Jesus, he said they are one, and he said, as the father sent him, so he sent us. Is that true? John 20, 21. Now, if Jesus came here and they could not trap him, he was not frustrated, he was not stagnated with that creative mind, and that same mind is in you, then frustration should end from today. Don't tell me there was no difficulty. There was difficulties. He came to a point where there was no food for 5,000 people. So brokerage is not new. To be broke is not new. He was broke too, but he came out of... Permit me. <laughs> Jesus had no food to feed 5,000 people. But the Bible said, himself knew what to do. Say mind. Go nowhere, because this message continues shortly. For as you think in your heart, so are you. Every man of impact is a productive thinker. Daniel was in the midst of wicked rulers who brought degrees against Daniel. Yet Daniel came out through thinking. Everything to make you a success is already in you. God has given to you, but you have not steered it. When a man engages his mind productively, he can't be trapped by any wicked ruler. Thinkers rule their world. Mental Development for Impact, a series of teachings that will help you succeed in life through thinking. To get a copy of this message on DVD, contact us through the number displayed on your screen or visit our website at salvationministrieshs.org. road is not new. Jesus too had it, but he engaged the forces of his mind to produce. May the same force in you produce in the name of Jesus. <laughs> it, it, we have this kind of mind, therefore, we have what it takes to produce outstanding results. First and foremost, convince yourself that what it takes to produce outstanding results is inside of you. It's not somewhere else. It's not in a pastor. It's in you. It's a lesson. Now hear this. So you have to think possibility thoughts. Miracle thoughts. Your mind should begin to think if it's in me, then nothing is impossible. Is that true, sir? Shift. There should be a paradigm shift in your thinking. If I have the mind of Christ, then there's no impossibility in my life. There's nothing that there is no way out. No matter the challenge, the kind of mind in me is too loaded for me to be remain to remain in that challenge. Now hear this and hear me well. I'll show you something in Isaiah 26 verse 3. Now, no matter the challenge, hear what God says. Isaiah 26 verse 3 says, Thou will keep him in perfect, shall we do it together? Thou will keep him in perfect peace. Whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusted. That no matter the challenge, once my mind is stayed on the word of God, I'm sure to overcome. So outstanding resource are only experienced by those whose mind refuse to shift, but they stay on the word of God, irrespective of the challenge. When your mind is hooked to the truth, you become a sign to your world. 
Now hear this. For instance, I'll give you a typical example. Why you know mind is powerful when it comes to your life. The man Abraham, for instance, I'll give you an illustration and I'll tell you a, live, a life story that happened. The man Abraham, we all know his story in Romans chapter 4, 19 and 21. The Bible said Abraham at 100 body was what? Dead. In modern language, he was impotent. He was what? An impotent man. Can he have a child? In modern language, his body had no life at 100 to produce a child. Is that true, sir? Am I talking? Now, this thing I'm talking, in verse 19 and verse 21, let me be very precise, turn to 19 and 21, Romans chapter 4. The Bible says, and be not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead. That word considered not simply means he thought above his circumstance. He upgraded his mind to a point he didn't look at his circumstance. His mind said, irrespective of what my body is saying, I know that what God has said is superior to what my body is saying. He put his mind based on Isaiah 26 verse 3 and put his mind on the word of God and said, I know my body is dead. There's no point talking that, but my mind is fixed on the truth. That I don't consider what my body is saying, I rather consider what God is saying. The fact is, you have HIV. The truth is, he took. We are not doubting the fact of the medical report, but the truth is, he took. The fact is, your tubes are closed. The truth is, you must be fruitful because you serve God. He considered not, verse 19, are you there, sir? Romans 4, 19. He considered not his own body now dead, but when he was about what? Neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. Verse 21. He said, and being fully persuaded that what God had promised, it was us, he was able also to he, he, he got to a point he refused to shake in his mind. Because Satan must have told him how you sure at 100 you'll be able to have a child. He said my mind is fixed on the world. Some of us are here. All Abraham did was to use the truth before him to establish that God was able to bring to pass what he had promised. Does that make sense? Praise God. He taught above what? His circumstance. Now, I will tell you a life story why you know mind determines your future. Many people are where they are because of their mind. An experiment was performed by some scientists, life story, To discover how the mind and words affect you in life. That words spoken to you affects you through your mind and affects your life as a whole. Now, they took some players and they wanted to do an experiment. And these players were told that they had an infection, a bacteria. And that it has affected their system as a disease. That they were required to go to the hospital for tests. They told the whole players a, a team. And in one week, two of the players were paralyzed. And couldn't get up from their bed. And all the players in the team had one symptom or the other by that singular word that affected their mind. But here the, the, the mystery behind it. <laughs> the truth is, after the one week, they were told that there was no disease. 
Nothing was affecting them. But the scientists wanted to prove that the mind has power on your life. There was no sickness. There was no disease. But just telling them, two people could not get up after one week. Life story. It's a mystery. Hmm. Nothing was wrong with them. No bacteria in their bodies. No disease. But the mind immediately controlled their body. So your mind controls your body. That's why somebody gets a report HIV and in one week is dead. The moment he allows the mind to collapse. Am I talking to someone here? Some of you are where you are now based on what your father said to you. Your parents looked at you when you were small and said, good for nothing. And from that day they said, good for nothing. You just program your life as good for nothing. <laughs> your teacher looked at you and said, you will fail the way you are. And that same one word, that's why you are, that you are born again does not change your mind. Your spirit changes, but your mind does not change. That's why a born again mind is not automatic for success. He said, as he said, be not conformed to this world, be you transformed by renewing your mind. So if you don't renew your mind that you made on that call, does not guarantee success. That's why the church missed it. After all that call, after salvation, you have a duty to renew your mind with the word of God. Are you getting me? So that you made all that call, does not mean you succeed. No! You have to stay with the word to renew your mind, to agree with the truth, then your life will be upgraded. Because some of you are where you are now, Based on what has been fed into your mind. Either through news you watch on television. Or through statements spoken to you. Or through what you read. Because words come from different angles. Some of you just listen to news and they say the economy of the nations are bad. And then your mind tells you economy is bad. Economy is bad. Economy is bad. No way economy is bad. And your mind says it's bad. And say life is bad. Life is really bad. And say life is good. Say to yourself life is good. Things will go well with me. Your mind controls your life. Your future is controlled from your mind. Shout hallelujah. You know, most people's self-portrait is a function of what's spoken to them. Have a good picture of the you and your future. That uncommon dream, that dream of yours, is kept alive with right spoken words. Abraham used the truth to change his life. May you behave like Abraham. Yeah. All Abraham did was he talked of the faithfulness and the integrity of God. Coming up on this episode. So every outstanding result it's a function of world rooted. What what? Thoughts. If you have to, you have to, as a covenant child, go back to the scriptures and then have your your root in the word of God. Then your life will begin to change. Your words can dilute your dreams if your mind does not know how to guide them. You program your life for failure or for success through your thought. That's why they pay a manager more than a laborer. The laborer carries the block, the manager does the thinking. The thinking brings more money than the labor. It's the thinker that earns more. And the whole world is thinkers that are more successful in every field, including pastoral world. To increase your capacity in thinking, Think of what works and not just more work. Think of, I will explain what I mean. Think of what works and not just more work. 
For every challenge before you, think of multiple answers, not just one. For every challenge before you, think of multiple what? When something comes, be multidimensional in your thinking to find solution, not just one. The greatest miracle is not a miracle that eyes are open. The greatest miracle is not that the lame walked. The greatest miracle is not that you bought a house. The greatest miracle is the miracle of salvation. If you have not met Jesus, I want to pray specially with you. Just pray this prayer after me, Lord Jesus. I surrender my life to you. I believe in my heart that you died and rose from the head to save me. Right now with my mouth, I confess you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Amen. For life services, prayers, and counseling, visit smhos.org or call the numbers on the screen. This program was brought to you by Salvation Ministries, Home of Success.